little kids can be fun to play hide and seek with. If you've ever been around a little one, they can, they can think that they're hiding just by closing their eyes. Where's Johnny? I can't find him. And oh, there he is. Or they'll go into the next room and sit in the middle of the floor. You like peek around the corner. I found you. Or they're hiding behind the broomstick, giggling loudly. Loudly, It's easy to know where they're at and what they're doing. Sometimes I think we wish we would have that with God, just this ease. It can be frustrating sometimes trying to figure out the questions that we have with God, trying to figure out what is God up to. And I'm sure you felt like that. When life gets hard, we ask the question, where is God? And sometimes those answers are hard to come by. And we, we saw that last week in the book of Ruth. We opened up to chapter one, and almost immediately we saw that life was hard for this one family who's the, the main, one of the main characters, her, her name is Naomi. And they experience a food shortage so bad that they had to move away from family and friends. They get to that new country, and there, Naomi's husband died, followed by the death of her two sons. She said, I am bitter. The Lord has his hand against me. And she began to ask question, God, where are you? God, where, where, are you, where were you when my family died? God, why do, you, why do bad things happen to good people? God, where are you with all the pain and the hurt? And so today, we're going to begin to see some answers. Now, the book of Ruth is, is different from a lot of other books in the Bible. In the other books, we'll see God actually speaking. Or a prophet speaks for him. Or we're even given a behind the scenes to say, it lets us in on know, knowing what God's up to. The book of Ruth doesn't have any of that. What we see there is simply kind of, here's what happened. This is everyday life. And this is where we're at personally. We're living everyday life. We don't always get the behind the scenes. Here's exactly what God's up to in your life. We, we don't have that. And so we can relate to kind of what's happening in the book of, of Ruth. So we don't have direct explanations. We don't have direct answers. Um, why did the famine happen? Why did God allow Naomi's family members to die? Now, we don't have the, the, the whys there, but we do see what's happened. We do have the final chapter here. And so it's helpful to look back and kind of figure out answers to the question, where is God? So we're in the book of Ruth, chapter 2. We're going to start in verse 1. So Ruth 2, verse 1. Now there was a wealthy and influential man in Bethlehem named Boaz, who was a relative of Naomi's husband, Elimelech. One day, Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, let me go out into the harvest field to pick up the stalks of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it. Naomi replied, all right, my daughter, go ahead. So Naomi and Ruth get back to town. They don't have jobs. They don't have food. So, hey, bright idea. We need to get some food. So Ruth decides, I'm going to go nearby fields, pick, a, pick what's up what's left over. And the Jews actually had laws about this. We see some in the book of Leviticus. Now, the book of Leviticus is, pro is not an extremely popular book. It's not one that you might even have read. There's a lot of rules there. It doesn't always make sense. But in the time of coronavirus, some of it does make sense. It talks about quarantining people um, and how to deal with sick people and, and washing properly. And so in, Le in Leviticus chapter 19, there are rules about the harvest. And if you owned a field, what you were supposed to do is not pick it clean. You were supposed to leave some behind, leave the edges of the fields um, unpicked so that the poor and the foreigner could come behind and have something to eat. And Ruth was both poor 
and a foreigner. So she came behind the workers to pick, pick up that leftover grain. She made sure she got to the edges of the fields to, to get those things. And she worked hard to have enough to eat. Now, even though there was a, a law about this in the book of Leviticus, people didn't always like um, others showing up in their fields to, to, to do this. So sometimes these poor people, these foreigners, were, they had a hard time. They, they were given a hard time for doing that. They, they, weren't, they didn't want them around. And so you would notice who would show up that wasn't a part of the team. And so Ruth was noticed. When she showed up, she was noticed by the workers and by a guy named Boaz. Let's pick it up in verse uh, 5 here. Boaz asked his foreman, Who is that young woman over there? Who does she belong to? Foreman replied, She's the young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. She asked me this morning if she could gather grain behind the harvesters. She has been hard at work ever since, except for a few minutes rest in the shelter. Boaz went over and said to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, stay here with us, and uh, when you gather grain, don't go to any other field. Stay right behind the young women working in the field. See which part of the field they are harvesting, and then follow them. I've warned the young men not to treat you roughly, and when you are thirsty, help yourself to the water they've drawn from the well. Ruth fell at his feet and thanked him warmly. What have I done to deserve such kindness? She, she asked. I'm only a foreigner. And so Boaz be, sees this woman he doesn't recognize, finds out that uh, she, she is Ruth. And he begins to speak kindly to her and says, hey, uh, I have some fields here. You can stay there. Um, pick up what you want. I've, I've told my guys to leave you alone, to uh, allow you to go ahead behind them. And you get thirsty, uh, you know, have a drink. And just, just make sure that uh, we want to make sure that you're you're okay. And Ruth was kind of overwhelmed. She was flabbergasted. This so expected that he was being kind to her, and she didn't even know who he was. And she, so she asked the question there. Verse ten: What have I done to deserve such kindness? I'm only a foreigner. Verse eleven: Yes, I know, Boaz replied, but. I also know about everything you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. I've heard how you left your father and your mother, your own land, to live here among complete strangers. May the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge, reward you fully for what you have done. And so, uh, people knew the story of, of Ruth, about what Ruth actually did. And Boaz says, yeah. Uh, I know all about that, so I'm going to take care of you just like you've taken care of Naomi. And he blesses her before she, um, before they continue. And in the story here, the, the, there comes to a meal time. Boaz invites her to the meal. She eats as much as she wants. She ma he makes sure to tell his workers to leave her alone. And and even you know what? If you notice her behind. Just drop some 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 grain. Like I know you have it, but you know, let's make sure she is taken care of. And so Ruth works all day collecting this grain, and then in the evening she she makes sure that she separates the grain from the waste product. And it was just a, a long day of work for her. She goes home to Naomi and has way more grain. Naomi notices this and, and wonders what's going on. Verse 19. Where did you gather all this grain today? Naomi asked. Where did you work? May the Lord bless the one who helped you. So Ruth told her mother-in-law about the man whose field she had worked. She said, the man I worked with today is named Boaz. May the Lord bless him, Naomi told her daughter-in-law. He is showing kindness to us as well as your dead husband. That man is one of our close, closest relatives. He is one of our family redeemers. And so this was unexpected. She comes home with, with this mountain of grain that she, like, it just doesn't happen. And she said, someone helped you. May God bless that person. And so 
uh, Ruth says, that man, his name was Boaz. And then it clicked for Naomi. It made sense. Yeah, she knew Boaz. And Boaz knew Naomi. In fact, Boaz was a close relative. It was kind of like first cousin once removed. Which I don't even know what that means, but I've heard people say it. Someone who was close enough to them that they, they knew each other. And it was family helping family. Now, this uh, brings us to a key concept here. If you look at verse 20 at the, the very end, this version calls Boaz uh, one of their family redeemers. Another version will say kinsman redeemer. Um, that's a huge concept in the book of Ruth. What does that mean? Well, the family redeemer was a close relative whose job it was, was to take care of the family when tough times would, would come. And so that family member would help out, would step up. So let's have Joe and Jim Bob. All right. So if Joe was in debt and he had to sell his fields in order to, to, have, to pay off the debtors, the first person he would go to is Jim Bob. Um, if if uh, Joe died, then Jim Bob would step up to help out with, with the expenses and, and buy property. If someone actually killed Joe, which someone killed Joe, Jim Bob would be the one to make sure that justice was served. And so this kinsman redeemer had some, some duties, some responsibilities. It was his job to come to the aid of the family. This is family helping family. Uh, a family member who couldn't help themselves would get help from the kinsman re redeemer. So when families experienced tough time, they couldn't figure it out on their own, they would turn to the kinsman redeemer. So who is the ultimate kinsman redeemer? What do you think? you have any ideas? The, the ultimate rescuer the one who comes to people's aid still you got it you're right jesus is the ultimate kinsman redeemer when we were able, unable to help ourselves jesus came to our rescue he showed us kindness that we didn't deserve he solved our problems on the cross by dying for our sins and we see jesus through the actions of Boaz. Now back to the question, where is God? Now remember, the book of Ruth doesn't come out and tell us, well, this is exactly what God said, or this is what God's doing behind the scenes. But we have some clues to answer to this, this question. Think about what's already taken place so far. It just so happened that, that Ruth insisted on coming back with Naomi. It just so happened that Naomi and Ruth arrived back at the beginning of the barley harvest. It just so happened that Ruth ends up in the field of Boaz. It just so happened that Boaz shows kindness to, to Ruth. And it just so happens that Boaz is a close relative of Naomi. Now, you might look at that and say, well, that's just coincidence. Depending on how you view, you can say that's what you can come, come up with. But really, how you view life matters. When we begin to see things line up like this, we can view that as coincidence or something else. And really what's happening here is that God is at work in their lives. That's what's happening in the story. God was orchestrating things so that, um, so that for, for, the, for the good of Naomi and, and Ruth. Yes, he allowed bad things to happen. And yes, he took the bad and worked it for good. That's so much of what happens in life. God taking, the, taking bad and working it for good. You might be saying, well, why doesn't God just skip to the good part? 
If God is good, why doesn't he just do, do this good all the time, provide a good environment all the time? It's a good question. It's because that, that's something God will, will do. Because one day in the future, he has heaven waiting for us. But this is not heaven. And our home for now is a broken place. It is a place of pain and heartbreak. Because, because of the bad that's happening here, we are tempted to think that God doesn't care, that he's not near, that he's not going to do anything. But this is the point where I believe that Naomi and Ruth began to um, put things together. They begin to understand that God is always at work, even if we can't see it or we don't under, understand it. God is working. Sometimes it's obvious and sometimes it's very subtle. It's quiet. But he takes bad and uses it for good. Looking back into the story, we, we can see that. We can see God's hand guiding Naomi. Of all the daughters-in-law she could have ended up with, she got Ruth. Of all the fields Ruth ended up in, she ended up in Boaz's field. God was at work. And God is at work in your life. We live by faith and not by sight. And so answering the question, the personal question for us, where is God right now will prove difficult. It's challenging because the final chapter isn't written. We don't know what the future has. And especially in this time, we don't know what the next week or two will hold for us. But God is at work in the coronavirus, the coronavirus season. He's making good out of the bad. But if you only notice the bad, you're not going to see the good. You're not going to see what God is up to. So pay attention to the good that's happening around you and inside of you. Consider what God is up to. And I can't promise you're going to understand everything fully because this is there's mystery with, with God. But looking back, you should be able to see this better. That God's hand was guiding you all along. That God never left you. God never turned his back on you. That he's at work in your life. And that Jesus has been and will be your kinsman redeemer. So hang in there. Your story isn't over. God's got you. He will see you through this. Let me pray. Father, we're grateful to be able to look back on how you work through a difficult situation. We have a lot to learn here. Well, we want to know answers. We want to know why, where, how, right now. And yet, we don't always have that information. So, in this time now, as we struggle forward, I pray that we would keep the faith. That we would trust you. That we would notice your hand working instead of focusing in on all the negative stuff out there to, to look to the positives, to look to the promises that we have in the future. So God, help us. Help us to know that you're at work, that you're near, and that you have our backs for your glory and our good. In Jesus' name, amen.